welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Are you up to living the life of Riley? <laughs> well, this is episode number 116 of The Life of Riley, and it's entitled The Bread Shortage and the Black Market. Today's show originally aired on June 8, 1946. Teal for a beautiful smile, The Life of Riley for laughs. <laughs> Teal, T-E-E-L, Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice. That's it, T-E-E-L. Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, brings you the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Remember, friends, for beautiful smiles, it's T-E-E-L, Teal. And just for last, it's R-I-L-E-Y, Riley, in the life of Riley. Most people believe that the pen is mightier than the sword. But Chester A. Riley believes a knife and fork are much more important. Food is one of the true loves of Riley's life. But every now and then, our hero discovers that the course of true love never runs smooth. Junior. Oh, that's an hour, Pa. Honest, I don't know where you get your manners. That's no way to eat. Gouging the center out of a slice of bread and then nibbling the crust like a chipmunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you watch me and you'll learn manners. The etiquette way is to take a slice of bread, fold it neatly in four, <laughs> and then shove the whole thing in your mouth. Remember, Junior, people shouldn't make gluttons of themselves over food. That's right, Peg. Personally, if I didn't get hungry, I'd never touch the stuff. Uh, slice some more bread, huh, Dumplin'? You've had one slice, Riley. We have a new rule in this house. Only one slice to each person from now on. Well, what about the gravy? I can't eat gravy without bread. It keeps slipping through my fork. <laughs> Why all of a sudden can't I have bread? Riley, if you read the newspapers once in a while, you'd know why. I read the newspapers all the time. I know everything important that's going on. The news has been full of Lewis, ain't it? Well, I can tell you anything you want to know about him. Well, all right, Smarty. Tell me one thing. He's two to one to knock out Billy Conn at the Yankee Stadium. Bob, <laughs> uh, not Joe Lewis. John L. Lewis. Who's he? Oh, you're impossible. If you read anything beside the sport page, you'd know there's a bread shortage through the whole country. Why don't you just admit you forgot to go shopping today? I did not forget. I'll bet you my friend Gillis's wife didn't forget to shop for her poor, tired husband. Junior, run next door and borrow us a bread. Riley, you're only sending the boy on a fool's errand. Fool's errand, huh? Okay, then I'll go myself. <laughs> My darling wife, you don't expect James Madison Gillis to believe that. Why don't you just admit you forgot to go shopping today? I'm going over and borrow your bread from my friend Riley. Say, why don't you look where you go? Brother Gillis. Brother Riley. <laughs> I was just on my way over to your hacienda. Well, that's funny. I was just going over to your joint. <laughs> Well, fancy that. Why, I got up in the middle of lunch to see you. Oh, pal. It's uncandy. <laughs> I've done the same thing, Gillis. Imagine, brother Lodge brothers who'd rather see each other than eat. Yeah, this we ought to tell down at the lodge. It belongs in the minutes of the BPLA. Yeah. What an example for the Brooklyn Patriots of Los Angeles. <laughs> Yes, sir, when it comes to brotherly love, we're crawling. Like, if any time you wanted a small favor, you only got to come to me, right? Right. And any time you wanted anything, I'd be hurt if you didn't come to me. By, By the, the way, way, brother... brother I... Proceed, Brother Riley. No, 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 Brother Gillis, you proceed. Very well. Loan me a bread. Is that all, Gillis? Is that all why I'd be only too good? Bread. Yeah. yeah, just one loaf. Well? Uh, Gillis, 
If I had it, you could have it. You know that. But look, Riley, you... you told me to come to you for anything, and here I am. If a whole loaf is too much, I'll settle for a dozen slices. All right, two measly slices. Without butter. <laughs> Believe me, Brother Gillis, if my right arm was made of bread, I'd slice off half and throw in a couple of fingers. But the fact Riley, is... Riley, are you telling me you ain't got two slices of bread? Well, yeah, we got bread, but you see, we got new rules. Oh, I get it. So this is your idea of friendship. I'm glad I got on to you, so as I can get off of you. <laughs> now, wait, Brother Gillis. Don't but... give me that brother stuff. To me, you're strictly an in-law. <laughs> Gillis... That's going too far. Get off of my property, Riley, and stay off. Okay, I'm going, and don't you never speak to me again. Don't worry, I won't. I don't never want to hear your voice. Why, from today on, I won't even listen in on your party line. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Daroff, if, if you do get in any bread, send one over to my house, please. Be glad to, Mr. Riley, if I get any. Yeah, all right. I've been to eight grocers. Everybody tells me the same thing. I can't hey, I... hey, Riley. For who? Oh, oh, it's you, Benny. So long. Hey, wait a minute, chum. Uh, I can put you onto a good thing. <laughs> Look, Benny, I ain't interested in betting on horses. All I want right now is some bread. Well, what do you think I'm talking about, chum? Just follow me into this alley. You mean that you know where the... Here's a place. Wait a minute, Benny. This ain't no bakery. Look at that sign. Pool parlor. That's just to keep out the riffraff. <laughs> we don't sell to everybody. Now, wait a minute, Benny. This bread ain't over sealing price, is it? I don't want any part of that. Riley, I'm hurt. Deeply hurt. I guarantee we sell bread at strictly market price. Are you sure? Why, Riley, would I be associated with anything shady? I got a reputation to hold up. San Quentin didn't knock six weeks off for good behavior for nothing. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know, Betty. Don't I... worry. This is strictly on the up and up. Everything's wide open. We got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. Let's go in. Oh, all right. Duck in, boys. Fred, my pal Riley wants you to fix him up with a little, you know, B-R-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's a good thing I don't want pumpernickel. <laughs> How much bread do you want, bud? Well, I don't want to rob you. How much bread do you want, bud? Well, all I need is one. Okay. One carload of this. <laughs> no, 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 not a carload. I only meant one... Don't tell me you only want one crate. A measly 60 loaves. Benny, this guy's wasting my time. Well, he, he wants to start easy, Fred. Just a couple of dozen. A couple of dozen? No, I couldn't. I... Oh, oh you mean you want only one dozen? Well, the fact is that... Riley, come here a minute. Right, wait. Don't start haggling. Oh. Haggling makes Fred nervous. Yeah. And when Fred gets nervous, he can't stand people staring at him. So he closes their eyes. Yeah. Well, Benny, I was just after one loaf of bread. Stop the whispering. Stir. I'm getting nervous. Come on, bud. How many breads? Uh, uh, one dozen. Just for a sample. Next time, who knows? <laughs> it's a deal. Benny, get the guy a dozen. Right. Now, shell up. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Benny said market price, 12 cents. That's a dollar forty-four. Correct. Only... Only what? Only with every loaf of bread, we do you the courtesy of selling you one of these genuine mother of pearl asterisks. <laughs> asterisks? Oh, Say, that's just a clamshell. There's a million of them on the beach at Santa Monica. We refer to them as ashtrays. I say they cost you four bits apiece. And if I was you, bud, I wouldn't pass up this opportunity. Here's the bread, Riley. 
12 breads, 12 ashtrays at 7 bucks and 44 cents. Well, I don't know, Benny. Benny, I... tell him to hurry up. I don't like the way he's staring at me. Uh, y'all, y'all, okay, okay, here. Now, uh, all I got is a 10 spot. Hey, uh, Fred, you want Fred to keep the change, don't you, Riley? Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, keep it. Uh, well, I gotta be going. Just a minute, bud. Let me give you some good advice. Never part with them clamshells. They may save your life. My, my life? Yeah. If you ever get the notion you'd like to talk about me being in the bread business, take a look at them shells. And remember that them clams would be alive today if they kept their mouths shut. <laughs> Loaves of bread, Pop. Yeah? And 12 clam shells. We refer to them as ashtrays. <laughs> I couldn't help it, son. When you buy these ashtrays, they make you take the bread. Yeah, but, but, but 12 loaves. Boy, wait till Mom gets home. You'll catch it. Junior, we gotta hide it until we can eat it up. Hmm. Well, how you keep it fresh? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put them in my cigar humidor. Oh, 12 loaves? No, no, that won't work. Junior, you've got to help me. Remember, we're in this together. We? We can eat it in a week if we concentrate. <laughs> Riley! It's your mother. Quick, help me stuff this bread under the table. Now, pull the cloth down on the side, Junior. Come on. Riley, yeah. open the door. My arms are full of packages. Is it all clear, Pa? Okay. Oh, come right in, Dumplin. <laughs> Let me take some of them bags. Huh? My, I had to stand in line so long. But what do you think, Riley? Riley. I got a loaf of bread. <laughs> Just what we needed. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you, Pop. Well, aren't you pleased, Riley? You wanted bread. Please. I'm speechless. Uh, Peg, what are we having for supper? Mmm, see. Salad, soup, roast leg of lamb, and dessert. Why? I got a better idea, Peg. Tonight, let me make dinner. Well, I never... <laughs> what would you serve? Oh, I got a great menu. First, bread salad. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, chopped bread and lettuce. What? Yeah, and then for soup, we'll have toast. <laughs> toast? Yeah. I, I mean milk toast. <laughs> milk toast on toast. <laughs> what? what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, and then we could have roast bread loaf. <laughs> That's... That's bread stuffed with breadcrumbs. <laughs> and for dessert... Chester we... Riley, you got a strange look on your face. Have you been up to something? Who, me? No, only... Look, Peg, suppose... Uh, uh, just suppose, mind you, that I knew where to get bread. Uh, lots of bread. What would you say? There's only one way to get lots of bread, Riley. We talked about it at the League of Women Voters. We're organizing to fight it because it's a black market. B -b 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 black market? Yes. It robs honest people like us of our share. The bread goes to people who are willing to pay overpriced. Oh, I wouldn't go for a racket like that. Or else they sell the bread at market price, but make you buy some worthless thing along with it. <laughs> Only a moron would fall for that. <laughs> Now, wait, Peg. Maybe you're being a little unjust. Unjust? I mean, look at it through the moron's eyes. <laughs> like I do. Well, Riley, it's nice to be tolerant, but all I can say is I'm glad you're not the type of man who'd do a thing like that. I ain't? Uh, then what type am I? Well, you're sweet and unselfish, and the main thing... You're honest. What a revolting development this is. <laughs> Peel has just brought you the first act of The Life of Riley, and we'll be back with Riley in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Ken Carpenter. Think, are you brushing gum line cavities into your teeth with toothpaste or powder containing harsh abrasives? Well, why take this chance when modern liquid teal cleans teeth safely without abrasives? You see, out of every ten adults, eight have receding gums. And when gums recede, parts of your teeth are exposed 25 times softer than tooth enamel. 
Those softer parts are easily damaged by daily use of toothpaste or powder containing harsh abrasives. So chances are 8 in 10, you're risking those ground-in cavities daily, unless the dentifrice you use contains no such abrasives. Now, Teal is the only leading dentifrice that contains no abrasives. Teal cleans teeth with a patented ingredient, protects teeth from ground-in gum line cavities. The Teal way takes one extra minute a week to make teeth look their best safely. Follow directions on the package, and remember, large family-sized Teal saves money. Insist on T-E-E-L, Teal, the refreshing liquid dentifrice. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, Riley insisted that the bread shortage was exaggerated, and to prove it, went right out and bought a dozen loaves. Then he found out it was black market. Now, thoroughly ashamed, Riley is plotting to keep his wife from finding out his guilty secret. Oh, Junior, let this be a lesson to you. Crime don't pay. Oh, Pop, you didn't really commit a crime. You just didn't use your head. You're right. Nature gave me a wonderful head. And all I ever used it for was to keep my ears apart. <laughs> Pop, you got to get rid of all this bread. Yeah, I know, but... Uh, Junior, you take the sack of bread over to some other neighborhood and leave a loaf on each doorstep. Okay, I'll get going right away. Good. Yeah, but what'll I say if people ask questions? Oh, just say that it's free. Say that your father's very charitable. Tell him I'm one of the biggest philanderers in town. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Gillis. I thought it was you, but I couldn't be sure in the dark. Uh, that's quite a sack on your back. Uh, yeah. Well, so long, Mr. Gillis. Uh, just a minute, Junior. What's in that sack? It looks like... Ah, uh, please, Mr. Gillis, I gotta go. It's bread. It's bread. Oh, let me go. You got no right to go snooping in my father's business. Oh, so that's your father's business. <laughs> I, uh, I'm late now. So long, Mr. Gillis. Bread. A whole sack full of bread. And Riley wouldn't spare me a crumb. <laughs> the crumb? <laughs> brother Riley, a racketeer? Are you sure, Brother Gillis? Fellow Lodge Brothers, his own son admitted it. Brother Riley in the black market. I can hardly believe it. Wiping a hard-boiled egg from a pal's lunchbox. Yes. Slapping a penny scale till his palms bleed to get his weight free. Yes. <laughs> but the black market. I know how you feel, boys. It's a cat's apostrophe. <laughs> but our duty is plain. Therefore, I call upon the Supreme Council here to pass judgment on ex-brother Riley. Yeah, yeah, I say so. Uh, yeah. If, if it pleases the court. Uh, this may have no bearing on the case, but before we pass judgment, uh, shouldn't we have a trial? Well, it's a little irregular, but okay. Instead of voting Riley guilty without a hearing, let's hear his lying story and then vote him guilty. <laughs> Why ain't Riley here? He's been informed of the trial. Yeah, but we didn't tell him he's the one who's on trial. Maybe he'd like to defend himself. That would be unconstitutional. <laughs> Now, let's have the verdict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's have the verdict right now. Hey, fellas! Fellas, I just got your message. What's up? Well, what's the special meeting for, huh? Riley, the yeah. Supreme Council is meeting about a certain member who has violated Section 77B. What? High treason? Boy, I'm glad I got here in time. Let's toss the rat out on his ear. <laughs> we thought maybe before voting we'd give the guilty party a chance to prove he's innocent. I'm against it. If you guys think he's guilty, that's good enough for me. So be it. Aye. All in favor, we should throw Riley out of the lodge, say aye. Aye! Aye! Is that opposed? Nobody! Throw him out! Where is he? Come on, Riley, show your miserable face. Stand up and sit. Stand up. <laughs> Riley? Did you say Riley? Correct. But I'm the only Riley in the lodge. You mean you're the only Riley who used to be in the lodge. <laughs> we don't like black marketeers. No. 
No, wait, fellas. I, I didn't know. I, I was, I, I mean, a, a crook named Fred was, and he, I, 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 I'm as innocent as Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Riley, you're through with this lodge. No, no. Yes. To us, you're legally dead. We're hanging your pool cue at half mast. <laughs> It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> oh, hello, Digger. Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> I don't feel so good, Digger. Believe me, you've never seen anyone lower than I am. Would you like to bet? <laughs> the guys in my lodge think I'm dishonest. You, Riley? Yeah. That's ridiculous. I've known you for years, and you've always been honest and above ground. (laughs) Uh, You mean above board. Above ground is better, believe me. (laughs) Come, I'll cheer you up. You know what my friends say about my sunny disposition? Yeah. When you're low and getting lower, and your pace is getting slower, when you've no more vim or vigor... Just put in a call for Digger. <laughs> now, what's the trouble? Well, the lodge kicked me out because I got mixed up with the black market. Oh, the black market? Yeah. Riley, any man who fools around with the black market is only digging his own grave. And I'm opposed to that. <laughs> but it wasn't my fault. I couldn't help it. Gee, when Peg finds out you she... You mean your wife doesn't know? No. Oh, Riley, you mustn't keep secrets from your wife. Once I kept a secret from my wife. When we got married, I forgot to tell her that I was an undertaker. Well, what happened? As we entered our honeymoon cottage, from force of habit, I got six of my colleagues to carry my bride across the threshold. (laughs) I adore honeymoon. They're so gay. (laughs) Yeah, I guess you're right, Digger. I'd I better tell Peg myself before she finds out. Oh, uh, thanks for the advice. Don't mention it. Well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> and so... Well, Peg, that's the story. So just say that you forgive me and... I'm willing to forget the whole thing. Oh, no, Riley. Too many people are willing to forget the whole thing. They don't like to remember that most of the world is hungry. Hungry? I don't want nobody going hungry. We're asked to cut down to one slice of bread per meal, and we holler murder. Why? Well, it was okay during the war, Peggy. The war's still on, Riley. Only now it's a war against starvation. Well, we've got plenty of food. Instead of bread, we can eat mashed potatoes. But some people have nothing. Nothing? Why, people in China are eating clay. Clay. People in India are eating weeds. Old people, working people, and children. And you help starve them. Me? Yes. The people who buy on the black market aren't much better than the people who run the black market. Starving kids. Oh, uh, yes? Riley here. Fred. Yeah, Fred. Nice little joint you got here, Riley. You want to stay healthy and enjoy it? What? Riley, who is this man? That's the fellow who sold me the bread. Come on in, Fred. I'm I'm glad to see you. But he... It's okay, Peg. Riley, I hear you've been trying to muscle in on my business. Handing out bread all over. Now, lay off. (laughs) We like giving away stuff, Fred. It makes us feel good. Hmm? Like I got something to give you. Free. And it ain't clamshells. It's something you need bad, Fred. And here it is! Oh! That's for the people in China. Why, I'll give you... That's for the people in India. Oh, stop. I I ain't finished yet. 
I still got to give you for the people in Yugoslavia. <laughs> oh, that's for Yugo, and that's for Slavia. <laughs> My, my teeth. You knocked out my teeth. Good. That'll save more bread. <laughs> you can eat mashed potatoes. Now get out of my house before you break every bone in my miserable body. All right. I'm going. On. I'm going. Why, Riley, you were wonderful. Yeah. It's lucky for him I didn't know any more geography. <laughs> We'll be back in half a minute. Hurry, switch to teal on your toothbrush. Teal protects teeth from gum line cavities ground in by daily use of toothpaste or powder containing harsh abrasives. Teal cleans teeth gently without abrasives. T E E L, teal. The safe, refreshing liquid dentifrice. <laughs> Come to order. Brother Riley, mm-hmm. one of the lodge's most loyal stool pigeons has informed us how you bravely exterminated a black market skunketeer. Therefore, on behalf of the BPLA, I am reinstating you as a member of this lodge. Oh, fellas. Thanks. Thanks. I'm grateful. That's fine. And now, Brother Riley... Would you mind handing over five dollars for the new membership fee? <laughs> it's a losing fight. Rock and Gamble, makers of Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, invite you to be their guests next week to hear the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. William Bendix appears by arrangement with Hal Roach. The Life of Riley is produced for Teal by Irving Brecker and is directed by Don Bernard. Music by Luke Kozloff. The script by Ashmead Scott, Alan Lipscott, and Reuben Schiff. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Junior is Scotty Beckett. Digger Odell is John Brown. And others in the cast were Herb Vigran, Jerry Hausner, and Lou Merrill. This is Ken Carpenter on behalf of Teal, inviting you to listen again next week. And remember, for laughs, it's R-I-L-E-Y Riley. And for lovely smiles, it's T-E-E-L Teal. Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, protects teeth beautifully. It's a washing miracle for silk, nylon, woolens, dishes. What are you talking about? Dreft. I'll spell it. D-R-E-F-T, dreft. Yes, ladies, and dreft spells faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. That's true. Take lingerie, for example. Why, dreft keeps my dainty underthings fresher and brighter than even expensive soap flakes. Right. You see, dreft is different than soap. Dreft's rich suds rinse clean and clear. They simply can't leave any sticky deposit the way all soaps do. No wonder dreft keeps lingerie, stockings, new woolens, prettier and brighter, far longer than any soap could ever do. With dreft, There's no soap fading. Yes, and for washing dishes, Dreft is just unbelievable. Why, Dreft makes my dishes shine even without wiping. Every woman knows how dishes washed with soap dry with a greasy film unless you polish them. Well, my Dreft wash dishes drain dry, bright and sparkling. Even glasses sparkle without touching a towel to them. Yes, ladies. Decide now to open up this bright new world of beauty for your nice things, for your fine washables, for your dishes. So get Dreft. In the bright green package, Dreft, Procter & Gamble's amazing suds discovery that gives you faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. That's D-R-E-F-T, Dreft. Next time you shop, get Dreft. List again next week, same time, when Teal for a Beautiful Smile brings you the life of Riley for laughs. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.
please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Friday for another episode of The Life of Riley and check in on Monday for the next installment of My Favorite Husband. Until next time, in the words of Rita Rudner, I love being married. It's so great to find that one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life.